Hey guys, how's it going? Tifty here, and today we have a really interesting topic for you guys. We're going to be looking at the skill floor and the skill ceiling of various heroes in Overwatch. Now, bear in mind, I have at least three hours in Overwatch, so I think I'm pretty qualified to talk about this. I do try and play quite a bit, you know, I watch a lot of competitive Overwatch, but at the same time, I have a tiny amount of hours compared to a lot of other people, so take this with a pinch of salt, try not to get too enraged. A lot of this will be based on opinion, and naturally I may show some unintentional bias as well. Also remember that heroes are kind of ever-changing, there are always buffs and nerfs coming along, new ways of playing the game, so this is just kind of a snapshot, but of course this could change. I've started doing quite a few videos around the topic of skill ceilings and stuff like that. These videos get a lot of interest, they start a bit of a debate, get people discussing stuff in the comments, but remember it doesn't really matter. Every single hero in this game has a very high skill ceiling. It's just a fun, interesting topic to talk about. If you're very precious about your hero, it can easily feel like you're being attacked. It's not what I'm setting out to do, it's just an interesting discussion to have. As long as you don't main Genji, because obviously he has no skills. Oh, joking, joking there. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so let's crack on. The first thing I wanted to cover are the assigned difficulty ratings. Now, I think there's a lot of confusion about these, and I don't think they always necessarily make a lot of sense. My understanding is that they are purely a rating system to guide new players as to which heroes are easy to get your head around, basically. If you've just picked up the game, you have no idea what's going on, try Soldier. He's dead simple. Now this is almost the skill floor, but it's not quite the same thing. A skill floor is about effectiveness of a hero at the lower end of the skill bracket. So this is not necessarily heroes that are very easy to be effective with straight away. It's simply heroes that are easy to understand how exactly you're meant to play with them. Their mechanics, their abilities are very simple to understand. Let's take a look at the ratings that have been assigned to each hero, starting with the one star heroes, and see if we think that anything looks a little bit odd. Now I've tried to put them in some kind of order, but I'm not super precious about these, so don't get too hung up on that. I'm always keen to hear your thoughts though in the comments below. A lot of these make loads of sense to me. Reinhardt, Vegeta, not so sure about those, and we'll come to that in just a sec. Next up are the two star heroes, which we have 11 of, so supposedly these take a little bit more thought, you may want to get some more experience with the game before trying these out. Now again, there's a few here that I think stand out to me as being a little bit off, but let's go through them all first and then we'll come back to them in just a second. Finally, the three star heroes, the ones that you might not want to try out straight away because they're a bit more fiddly to get your head around. Again, I've tried to put them in some kind of rough order as to which I think are slightly simpler in terms of their abilities and those that I think are a bit more complex to get your head around. I think Sombra, for example, if you just picked up the game, trying to get your head around her kit, you know, she's got a lot of fiddly little bits, you know what I mean? <laughs> she's got a lot of fiddly little bits. So let's look at them all together. Again, this isn't skill flaws, it's not skill ceilings, it's purely how easy are they to understand. Let me explain the ones that I think feel a little bit off to me. First of all, some of these guys with two stars feel like their abilities are pretty dead simple and could be popped up in the top category. McCree, Widowmaker, sure they have very high skill ceilings, sure you might not be effective with them if you just pick them up, but to understand what they have to do, it's dead simple. McCree, even if you have no idea what the flashbang does or what the point of rolling is, you can still walk around and shoot people. You know, it's dead simple and that's why I feel like he should be in the one star category. Personally speaking, I think some of these heroes in the one star category on the right should possibly be bumped up a little bit. So, Brigitte and maybe Reinhardt too. Sure, you could just stand there holding your shield up, but if you've come from COD or what have you, or Team Fortress, you're going to want to run into the enemy and swing your hammer, and that's not really what you're meant to be doing all the time. Another outlier for me is definitely Hanzo. Again, he's got a very high skill ceiling and he's got a high skill floor. He's very difficult to be effective with. But that being said, what do you have to do with him? You just shoot people. It's as simple as that. You just shoot the enemy. That's why I feel like putting him in the three star category doesn't quite make sense to me. Now, if you've read the star system differently, if you think it is about skill floor, then I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. The reason I don't think it's about the skill floor is because there's a lot of evidence for that here. So Arissa, Winston, Torbjorn, Symmetra, Diva, a lot of these heroes who you may suspect have a lower skill floor, i.e. you can be effective with them quite quickly without having to get that good at the hero. Lucio perhaps, Junkrat, all of these have been given two stars and I think that's because they have some slightly complex abilities which take a little bit of time to get your head around. So that was the first thing I wanted to talk about, the complexity of each of these heroes if you like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think the star rating makes any sense? And what do you actually think the star rating means? This is how I've read it, but maybe there's a bit of a mixture of things going on here.
Next up, I wanted to talk a little bit about the skill flaws of each hero. For this, I wanted to take a look at the website overbuff.com. Really interesting stats on this website. The thought I had was that one way you might discern a skill flaw is by looking at the usage and win rate and on fire rate at the very low levels of gameplay, so in bronze rank. And this might give us some indication as to which heroes lower skilled players are still getting some value out of them. So yeah, I recommend you checking out this website. You get a bunch of stats for the usage of each hero. You can filter by the rank, so I'm going to click bronze here. Now, what does the usage tell you? Well, I think it's a really tricky one. There's too much going on to get much from this. It might indicate which heroes people in simply enjoy playing, right? It might indicate which heroes people think they're being really effective with. It feels good playing with them. The win rate for pretty much all the heroes in bronze is below 50%, which kind of makes sense. Except for this cheeky little Symmetra at the bottom here. Now, you can't read too much into this because her pick rate is tiny. So this might suggest to me that she's being picked at the right time in a particular scenario at the beginning of a defensive map. And if you pick her at the right time, she tends to do well. That does not mean that she's really powerful. What I find more interesting to look at here is the on fire rate. Which heroes are kind of standing out as being on fire a lot and therefore at some point in the game have been very effective so the first one is Junk, and this one makes sense to me. I think Junkrat has a low skill floor. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, I have to add here that a hero with a low skill floor is often a very well designed hero, someone that's very simple to pick up. But yeah, Junkrat, you know, he's quite spammy. He can throw out a bunch of damage quite easily. Next up is Reaper, which has the biggest on fire rate for bronze, which I find really interesting. I mean, he is kind of simple to use, I guess. And there's a couple down at the bottom again, Bastion and Torbjorn. Kind of makes sense if you have no idea what's going on, you set up as a Bastion and you just sort of shoot stuff. And Torbjorn, at least you have your turret um, to do some work for you. I don't want to spend too long on this though because it is really difficult to analyse this data. Maybe I'll do another video in the future kind of analysing this website. Because if you go over to Grandmaster for example, it's interesting to see that Diva's still the, you know, the most popular hero. What does that tell us? I don't know. It's interesting that, you know, that same pattern is happening at the very low ranks and very high ranks. Even Bastion and Torbjorn have a very high on fire rate. I guess they're the kind of heroes you don't pick much, but if you pick them at the right time, you can do some crazy good plays, get on fire, and then you sort of switch off them again. One last thing I'll say here is that naturally, in the very high level ranks, you would expect heroes with high skill ceilings to gradually rise to the top. Because if you can just keep improving with them, keep getting better, keep getting more effective above and beyond other heroes, then they're bound to be picked more often. So if we very quickly take a look at these top four heroes, I think Zenyatta and Tracer, yes, that's true for these guys, but Winston and Diva, I think these fit into a separate category of just heroes that are very important to the game. They have very important utility, but may not necessarily have the same high skill ceiling. So just for jokes, I'm going to try and arrange all the heroes from lowest to highest skill ceiling, purely to enrage my viewers. I thought I'd, I'd pop a little TF2 joke in there for my TF2 viewers, they'll appreciate that. If I had to guess, I would say that Tracer, McCree, Widowmaker, Genji, these are kind of the ones that have very high skill ceiling and naturally a lot of the hitscan classes are going to rise to the top. And maybe some of the lower skill ceiling heroes are those that have buildings you can rely on or have very simple gameplay mechanics like Bastion where you, you know, it's all about positioning, you find a location and you start shooting the enemy. But I don't want to spend too long on this because it really is just random opinion. What I've done here is I've kind of grouped them into super high skill ceiling, lower skill ceiling at the bottom and then sort of everything else in the middle. It's just kind of a gut feel, finger in the air approximation. But yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If there are any crazy outliers here, if you think like, what are you talking about? Doom Fist is the highest skill ceiling in the world or Mercy is the easiest thing ever, throw in a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I think what I'll do in the future, because this is such a huge topic to talk about, I was thinking about maybe just taking segments of the heroes, for example, just grabbing the tanks, arranging them in some kind of order that makes sense to me, and then talking about that and getting your thoughts on it. Okay, so this is the really juicy part of the video. You're gonna love this. I've always wondered, you know, if you can use science and data to try and answer this question a bit more meaningfully. I don't think there is a way of definitively doing this, but on the other hand, I have found this really interesting article on Reddit that I think does as good a job as you probably could at answering this exact question using data. So this guy, and unfortunately he's deleted his Reddit account, he did a great job and I appreciate his work. I'm just sharing his work here. He says it's fine to share and you know talk about, but what he's done is he's basically tried to measure the effort spent to get to the peak performance of a hero. 
Now the way he's done this is measured the plateau point for a hero's hours played versus the increase in win rate above the average win rate. Now that's quite wordy. So what I thought I'd do is try and illustrate this for you guys as to what I think he's done. So imagine you've got this graph here. You've got win rate on the left and you've got effort spent on the hero or time spent on the hero at the bottom. As you spend more time on the hero, your win rate starts to increase. But at some point, this curve starts to plateau out and your increase in win rate ceases. You stop winning more games. And if you measure this for all the heroes, they'll all have a different point at which they stop winning games. So in this example here, the idea is that hero A has a higher skill ceiling than hero B. Now I understand if you're a little bit skeptical here, I know I was, and I'm still not 100% on this, but at the same time, the result that came through kind of reassured me. It felt like they made a lot of sense, and you'll see that in just a second. The one thing that I'm not sure about is, what if you can continue to get better at a hero, but not continue to get any more efficient with the hero? Does that make any sense? You're still getting more skillful at it, but you're not having any more of an effect at the game. Do you know what I mean? That's the only thing that kind of jumped out to me as being maybe an issue. But anyway, I recommend you checking this out. I put a link in the description. He goes through this in loads of detail. He talks about what exactly he is measuring, the exact process he used. One other thing I'll briefly mention is the weaknesses he points out in this method. There are four points he or she mentioned, and, and that is that if no one can play the character correctly, he cannot estimate the skill cap. For example, let's say Symmetra has an amazing potential, but no one's playing her right, then this data will not indicate correctly how high the skill ceiling is of Symmetra. He goes on to talk about communicating and shot calling, uh, but it's difficult to measure that, obviously. Thirdly, this is a measurement of pub gameplay, um, not professional play. The data covers uh, competitive season two, actually, so it is kind of old, I appreciate that. And finally, it doesn't account for if heroes are played in conjunction with another hero. For example, if Farah and Mercy uh, are taken as a single hero that may have an effect on the data okay so according to this data who has the greatest skill ceiling and predictably it's tracer she is kind of renowned for being the hero with the ultimate skill ceiling you know you can just infinitely get better at her so this kind of made sense to me and on the other hand who supposedly has the lowest skill ceiling according to this data that would be Bastion. Now I hope there aren't going to be any Bastion mains getting upset at this. Now, like I said, every hero has a very high skill ceiling, but I would imagine you get to a point where if you play him for a lot of hours, you just get to the point where you're not really improving much more. So let's just plonk all the other heroes in and take a look at what we're left with. I can't go through all these because again, there's just so many heroes, but I'd love to hear what you think about this and if there are any that stand out to you as being a little bit off, a little bit surprising, Starting with the top portion, Genji, Tracer, Widowmaker, McCree, these are all heroes I fully expected to be at the very top of the chart. And at the other end, Torbjorn, Reaper, Winston maybe, these are all heroes that I kind of expected to be somewhere at the lower end of the chart. I have to add here by the way, this is all just relative. The exact numbers, it doesn't matter too much. I tried to copy it from the chart as accurately as I could. You can find the actual numbers on the Reddit article but it doesn't matter too much about them for the sake of this discussion. So were there any surprises for me? Do you know what? I thought Junkrat would be lower. He's almost halfway up. This kind of surprised me. He feels like a very spammy hero but evidently there's a lot more to him than perhaps it meets the eye. Another one, Mercy. You know, she has a really bad reputation as being this hero you one trick, you know, no skills, just click on people, easy peasy, but she's halfway up this table. So clearly there's a huge difference between, you know, just picking up Mercy for the first time and being a competent Mercy and getting really skilled at her. These two kind of surprised me as well. I have heard the community talk about the ridiculous skill ceiling of Lucio and his mobility, so I knew he'd be reasonably high, but to be number three on this list kind of blew my mind a little bit here. And Roadhog, again, surely once you've sorted your hook accuracy out, that's pretty much the gist of it. Now, I play a lot of Roadhog. I'm not dissing him. He's awesome, but I just was very surprised to see him so high on this list. Finally, Zarya and Ryan. A little bit surprised that these are so low. I would have thought they'd be in the top third of this graph. So there we have it guys. What do you think about that? I have to stress that, you know, although this is based on data, it's not indisputable scientific fact. It's just, you know, one way of measuring it um, that gives one set of interesting results and it's not definitive by any means. So try to not get too worried about this. I just think it's a great discussion point for a video like this. I'd love to know what you think about this. Are there any surprises, anything that jumps out at you as being complete madness? I think this is really interesting and it tells us, you know, if you're looking for a hero that has a really high skill ceiling, one that will keep you busy for a really long time, this can be really useful to indicate which heroes you might want to pick up. If you want to see me break this down in any other way, I think that could be really interesting for future videos. 
Thanks everyone for watching. Super long video. Appreciate you guys sticking around. Join my Discord, follow me on Twitter, and um, I guess watch me on Twitch as well. Pop in the description below for more information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, they got a rhyme behind. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, crap. I, yeah. <laughs>